started on a, as an idea, and then we had only two scholars. Thankfully, we had a friend called Victoria Shepard and other Canadians who have supported us since then. But you had to start somewhere. And that's what I challenge young people to do. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the aspect of uh, Canada Matari Education Trust and the aspect of, from the angle of uh, uh, scholarship, and it's provided to uh, brilliant students who are from uh, underprivileged backgrounds and they would like to further their studies and they're interested in that. So from that, who is eligible to be part or to just even apply for a scholarship or how does it, how do you guys go about it? Thank you, that's a very good question uh, because we are just rolling out our scholarship applications uh, this week before the exam starts for the KCP, we have a criteria. And one of the criteria, you have to be uh, uh, with high marks. Mm -hmm. So 345 marks. You have to have sat your KCP in a school in Madare. You have to be a resident of Madare. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have to show the need that without CME trust, you mm -hmm. can barely continue with your high school education. Mm -hmm. And then you have to be willing to live away far away from home mm -hmm. because we take them to national and extra county schools far away from Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Some of them are in Nairobi, but most of them we take them to uh, schools outside Nairobi. Mm -hmm. For them to experience a different culture, mm -hmm. to be more independent, mm -hmm. and also to have an environment where they can fully concentrate on education. Mm -hmm. And the last thing that we focus on, we want young people who want to be ambassadors of Madara, mm -hmm. people who want to give back. When they are that age, 14, 15 years, they are very young to know this, but we just want to know how do they see Madare from, from uh, their, their eyes 10 years from now, how do they see Madare? Mm -hmm. How do they think the education will help Madare? Just to start thinking about the future and how they can be positive role models and change agents for the community. Mm -hmm. So you look at those, th those things, you pick a form in our office, it's free, and then you fill it up, and then if you are shortlisted for an interview, you come for an interview. After the interview, we select the final list. And then when, once we select the final list, we have a discussion with our board in Canada. And then once they approve, then we take these kids to uh, high school and university. Mm -hmm. And also in between the school breaks, you know, we don't just allow them to sit at home. Okay. We have a program for a whole week where you know, people like you come and talk about journalism mm -hmm. and other you know, decisions you had to make in your life at a certain age mm -hmm. uh, that have resulted to who you are today. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the tail end of that week, they have to do a community outreach program. It could be a cleanup, it could be a tree planting, it could be a home visit that they themselves organize, sought resources for. We just support them with letters and small things like that. Mm -hmm. But again, encouraging them that you don't need a lot of resources to start giving back. You can start with your 50 shillings, you can start with a tree planting exercise, you can start with a clean up exercise. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, so teachers will agree with me that we also have uh, young 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 guys who are still under privilege but they're not so good when it comes to formal education but they are talented in also different areas so does the organization also have a space for uh, such young souls okay what what we did is that last year we just hit our 15th anniversary mm -hmm. we did big celebrations in the community but at the same time we looked at we did a, a situation analysis of our program for the last 15 years okay and we realized we have some gaps uh, when we started, some of the scholars were not very uh, high achieving. Uh, but with time, while the program got stronger and more popular, we got more high achieving scholars. So we are looking at, there are still young people who are left out. I was recently uh, in a forum where the community were discussing extra judicial killings in Madare. 14 young people have been killed in the last three weeks in Madare. Mm -hmm. And these are young boys. So uh, young girls continue having early pregnancies. Mm -hmm. So there's still a gap. There's still a gap. But as Canada Madare Education Trust, we cannot fulfill every gap. We cannot fill every gap. And I always tell people that Madare is one big puzzle. We all need different pieces to come together. 
As Pomoja Initiative, that's where we come in. Mm -hmm. We fulfill that, one of those gaps. We work with youth who are young, who are talented. We teach them to be facilitators in different programs. We don't look at what they got in high school. We don't look at what they got in university, or even if they went to university. We look at their willingness to give back to the community, their willingness to learn a new skill. So Pamoja Initiative trains young people to be facilitators in different programs that we do in different uh, areas of the community. So we work with teenagers, we work with adolescents, we work also work with youth. So we devise programs. And then when we devise programs, we have curriculum. Then we train these young people who are free, who are transitioning from high school to university, or who are transi transitioning from university to the job market. In between, instead of them being lying around and doing nothing in the community, mm -hmm. we train them to be facilitators. At the same time, they learn about personal and community leadership. They learn about research, using data, analyzing data. Uh, they also learn about uh, monitoring and evaluation writing reports, documenting, using social media. There are so many things that we teach them to do. But again, this is Canada Mother Education Trust and Pamoja Initiative. Mm -hmm. We cannot bring everyone together under our organizations. That's why I always challenge other people. Come up with initiatives that can fill some of those gaps. Mm -hmm. uh, there are other amazing organizations in the community trying to do that, but we also need to do more. Oh, right. just to inspire other communities to yes. get into uh, the same things that you guys are doing. Yeah. So Tetes will agree with me that young people have time in their hands and crime with drugs are very much associated. So what, what sort of conversation do you have with uh, the young people when you engage with them? Um, when it comes to the aspect of just the usage of drugs and the aspect also crime as well as an organization, what type of conversation do you have with these well, young people? Well, this is a big reality. Mm -hmm. Drugs, uh, alcohol, they are very easy to find in Madare. They are very affordable as well. So when the youth are idle, those are some of the, th the things that they would easily access. But at the same time, uh, we challenge them. We, we, we give them things to do. We give them skills to use. It's not just talking about drugs is bad, because all their life they know drugs is bad. They know alcohol is not the best thing to do. But what we need now to do, and, or what we are trying to do, is that we provide opportunities for them to learn, to have a life skill that they can use and they can be busy. And even when they are not in Canada Mother Education Trust or Pamoja Initiative, they can go out there and use. You'll find so many of our young people, they are in different organizations, big organizations in our community and outside our community. Because of the skills that they learned, about facilitation, about personal community leadership, about working as a team, about writing reports. They can easily apply for these kind of jobs and get these jobs. But it's a continuous conversation. You don't just sit the youth down and tell them, this is bad. You provide a way for them to escape those realities. Mm -hmm. Because the realities, those are things are there. So for us is to provide programs, uh, trainings, to provide a network of people to come and give resources and volunteer their time to make sure that these young people are not idle, mm -hmm. are not sitting around in bases or in groups, but they are using their skills, their time. Because even some of these young people that are involved in crime and drugs, some of them are university graduates who have lost their way, they have lost their hope, they don't have any jobs, they have applied for so many jobs, they have not got any uh, response, positive response. So what, what do they do? They end up uh, hopeless and using this kind of uh, drugs and misusing social media and all that. Very true. So what sort of programs do you fa facilitate at Pamoja? Uh, Pamoja, we have different programs, mm -hmm. like I said, ranging from focusing on adolescents. Uh, there's a one called Adole Chat, which has an aspect of sexuality, mm -hmm. leadership, and entrepreneurship. It's a one-year program whereby uh, we have different topics in, in, in the three themes that I've mentioned. Yes. Uh, we also have programs focusing on older adolescents and teenagers. It's called Sekete, the real, the real sex talk program. Okay. Sekete is a shame word for sex. Mm -hmm. So this program we talk about sex, sex sexuality, mm -hmm. sexual identity. These are young people who may not have started practicing sex, but they know about sex. So we want to have a conversation which is open, which is 
free and we talk about all these things in an open manner. Mm -hmm. We also have a conference called VUCA, Youth Leadership Conference. Okay. It happens every year. And uh, this is centered around social entrepreneurship. We challenge young people from different slums in Nairobi, not just Madari, to come together and look at the biggest challenges around their community and find the most simple solution. All right. Bring together ideas, work as a team, collaborate. And, and they formulate good ideas from that problem. Mm -hmm. And then we, we are now focusing also on research because we have realized that uh, no matter what you do, you have to evaluate your programs. Mm -hmm. And then you have to start with a baseline. You cannot just have a program without knowing if it's actually needed or if this is the problem you are going to solve. So we have an, a, research, uh, a research department where we have done two research. One is called VACA, Violence Against Children and Adolescents in Madare. We are looking at what is causing violence in Madare mm -hmm. against children and adolescents. And we are formulating a program around that. And then recently, just a month ago, we finished a research called Livelihood Gender Gaps in Madare for youth between 17 to 24. We realized in Canada Madare Education Trust and Pamoja Initiative, we have given both boys and girls similar opportunities. But the boys achieve their potential much, much higher than the girls. So we are looking what are the gaps. And then we also went to the community. We realized the same. Boys are the photographers. Boys are the musicians. Boys are the politicians. Where are the girls? So we are looking what are the gaps causing uh, girls not to be part of these things. So we, we, we realized that there are so many issues to do with economy. There are so many issues to do with our patriarchy society. The, the culture, the religion, the girls themselves, the way they have been socialized. Mm -hmm. They are even uh, uh, becoming their own impediment to achieving their greatest potential. Mm -hmm. So we are using a lot of research going forward as Pamoja and making sure before we start another program, we interrogate what is the root cause of the problem and All then right. we find the most suitable solution to that problem. All right, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Back in 2015, that was, uh, courtesy, uh, I saw this courtesy of our mother channel, KBC, mm -hmm. and uh, you did an interview, I think it is in 2015, and one of your beneficiaries, I can't remember her name, maybe you can help, uh, she, I remember she said she was a house help, mm -hmm. but through the organization, she ended up being a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. Uh, from where you sit, it's seeing such a level of uh, change, growth, uh, and just seeing a life transformation. How does that make you feel? Uh, well, uh, I, I would say those are some of the people that make us wake up every early, every morning, looking at the transition from where she was and where she is right now. I was there in her graduation when she got a standing ovation. She had the best collection mm -hmm. uh, at Mark and Saul School of Fashion Design. It's the best school in East and, uh, in, in East and Central Africa for fashion. And she, she was there amongst the best, but she became the top student in her class. Mm -hmm. So it, it easily means that for every Katie, there are 99 of them who are missing out. So I'm very happy that she could change her life with that opportunity. I could be part of that process. But I'm also worried that not everyone will get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm working hard with partners, with friends, local and abroad. And especially I'm challenging people who are uh, here in Kenya. They need to come on board and support whatever we are doing. Because most of the funding, most of the support, we get from abroad. But what you realize, these young people are going to develop this country. They're going to work in this country. Mm -hmm. They're going to share their talents in this country, building this nation. So I also challenge young people to go out there and look for opportunities locally. Let's work together, find resources locally. You know, the corporates, the foundations in Kenya, they need to come to Madare and other slums to support this small grassroots organization that are on the ground, you know? Mm -hmm. And we can get more change if we have more resources. Mm -hmm. I have worked with this community work for more than 25 years professionally for 15 years. So I know what works, what doesn't work. We just need more resources, more support, 
more behavior. Speaking about more resources, uh, I'm, I'm working with young people. I'm so sure that it has gotten to a point where someone wants to start a business and they have approached uh, tra traditional financial institutions where they cannot get you know, a loan because uh, they don't have the you know, collateral pro or proper documentation. Uh, how do you maneuver through that? So, for example, we, that's a challenge that we normally face. Mm -hmm. So, for example, with the Ruka Leadership Conference, what we do is that after the training, after the leadership training, we teach them about social entrepreneurship, how to pitch and all these things. We also give them a seed funding of mm. 100000 Okay. after the conference. Not to everyone, mm -hmm. but to the best projects. Okay. But again, it's a challenge accessing a seed capital. Even for established businesses in Kenya, it's a challenge. That's an area that people need to come in and work. Mm -hmm. That's an area that the government needs to support. So it's a challenge. But at the same time, there are online or opportunities coming up where you can apply. There are some ventures. So normally I'm in different WhatsApp groups, mm -hmm. and I'm always sharing these opportunities with young people for them to apply to this funding. Oh, wow. They might look small, mm -hmm. but if you use them well, with the fellowship and the support in the funding, you can build something out of that. Again, we also need to look at it being a social enterprise. It's solving a problem, but at the same time, you're earning something from it. You're mm -hmm. you creating an employment for yourself, but also for the other youth that are around you. So again, other, other than just getting the funding, you also need to know how to use it well. You need skills to handle money. If I give you half a million and you don't have any skills to handle money, setting goals, uh, doing budgets and all that, then the money will not be used well. So it's a combination of all these things. But I agree with you. Mm -hmm. There needs to be more funding for young people because young people are amazing. Young people have a lot of good ideas. Young people need to be given an opportunity to make their mistakes and learn from them. Absolutely. So as we wind up, let's look at uh, mental problems facing young people. We have depression, anxiety, and also trauma in accordance to what they have gone through being in their upbringing in that, in that matter. So how do you intervene in such a crucial situation? Yeah, we have had uh, different cases, especially in our programs, both in Canada Mother Education Trust and also in Pamoja. Uh, we realize that it's a big problem. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, as a person who is there every day, you don't realize it's a big problem until when something bad happens to one of your beneficiaries or one of your scholars. So what we are trying to do is work with partners that are experienced, are experts in that field. Come in during our sessions. If we have, we suspect a kid is dropping down on their grades or a kid is having trouble with other kids, always conflicting, always fighting, always quarrels. We are talking to this organization to partner with them. Actually, next week we have a meeting with Kenya, uh, I think, Professional Association of Counselors. I'm not so sure if I got the name right, but mm -hmm. we have a meeting with them, whereby we are going to bring them as partners. We want to work with them because they are experts. We are not experts in that field, but we believe this is a big problem. And uh, if you indulge me, you realize it's caused by peer pressure. The world is moving too fast. The social media, the Instagrams, the, all these things. So young people also want to keep up with these things. Mm -hmm. Comparing their lives. There's also pressure mm -hmm. for you to perform. To, if you're in our scholarship, your parents want you to perform. so that Because we also have kids who are going to university right now mm -hmm. and graduating. Mm -hmm. So if you're in Form 1, Form 2, I know your parent is pushing you. We are also pushing you, the teachers are pushing you. So there's a lot of pressure, there's issues with relationships. Mm -hmm. So even young people, they are going through a lot. It's, that, it's just that we don't understand how to handle them. Right. So I encourage everyone to look at this thing as a very serious issue. Mental health is a big problem and not many, many Kenyans are aware or trained on how to respond to this. Myself, I'm still learning. And I think I'll continue learning and working with partners and bringing people together so that we can sort out this issue. Oh, and also creating awareness about it. Very important. All right, as we end up, uh, if anyone is watching this conversation and they would like to work with you, partner with you in different levels from the organization that you're running, how can they reach out to you? Yeah, they can come to our office. Mm -hmm. They can come to our office in Madare. Mm -hmm. We are based in Gitaduru. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a small office with graffiti, talking about different topics. 
Uh, but also you can find us on social media at at C M E Trust mm -hmm. and also at P double A Moja at Pamoja Initiative. You can always find uh, us there and also cmetrust.org and p double a m o j a dot org on our official uh, websites. Oh, well, and also if you ty type Titus Courier, everything yes. will come up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for endorsing me, and you need to follow me back. <laughs> I will, I will, Titus. Thank you very much, Titus, for being with us today. <laughs> Thank you very much, Michelle, for hosting me. I really appreciate it. Karibu sana. So that is Titus Courier, Executive Director and Co founder of Canada Matare Education Trust. We're looking at challenges facing underprivileged, underprivileged young Kenyans. So, guys, stay tuned. You have so much coming your way at Entrepreneurship Trust. Tuesday, but in the morning. Right here on Why in the Morning at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social. We'll be right back.